Well, five years ago, we had a speaker come to our fine gathering and talk to us about the root causes of ill health. So five years later, we've asked um, Dr. Sir Michael Mammoth to come back and talk with us a bit about what's happened these last five years. Dr. Mammoth, you know, is the uh, director of the Institute of Health Equity, also known as the Mammoth Institute. He's the chair of the European Review on the Social Determinants of Health and the Health Divide. He's the director of the International Institute for Society and Health and an MRC research professor of epidemiology and public health at the University College of London. He's also a good friend, my friend, Sir Michael Mammoth. Look along the row, count 10 women. If we were in Afghanistan, assuming women were allowed in, one of those women would die during her life from a maternal related cause, one in 10. Imagine seven of these vast arenas in the best of part of Europe, one woman in 46,500 would die during her life of a maternal related cause. That is entirely unnecessary. This enormous toll of women's lives, of children's lives, of people's lives is entirely unnecessary. As I'll tell you in a moment, I've just completed a European review of social determinants of health and the health divide. And I made an unlikely assumption that the United States of America was a European country. <laughs> I should say the European region of WHO is 53 member states. It includes the whole of the former Soviet Union. So it, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, it stretches so far east, you can just about touch Sarah Palin. Uh, <laughs> you think that's funny, I think that's really scary. <laughs> So I asked for maternal mortality, how would the United States look? It turns out 37 countries have lower maternal mortality ratios than the USA. You rank just behind Turkey and just ahead of the Ukraine. Two months ago I spoke to a meeting with the American Gynecological and Obstetric Society. And I said, I would be convinced if you told me you provided the best obstetric care in the world. Why do you rank 38th in Europe? And if I asked you, who is it who dies? Write it down on a piece of paper and you all come up with the same answer. It's the disadvantaged, the poor, ethnic minorities, the socially excluded. Now much of the discussion in recent months and years in the US has been about health care. Has been about health care. But having mentioned maternal mortality, which is health care related, You know, as well as I know, that much of the differences in health that we see across the world, the inequalities between countries and the inequalities within countries, there, I'll move it on. The inequalities within and between countries are not due to deficiencies in healthcare. They're due to the operation of the social determinants of health. And it was precisely for that reason that WHO set up the Global Commission on Social Determinants of Health. When we reported, we said 
social injustice is killing on a grand scale. Somewhat unusual for a WHO report to have that on the cover. Social injustice is killing on a grand scale. We said that inequities in power, money and resources are responsible for the inequities in health that we see around the world. A toxic combination of poor social policies and programs, unfair economic arrangements and bad governance is responsible for most of the health inequities that we see. The question is, is anyone listening? And the answer, my evidence-based answer, is yes. We said, naively perhaps, when we launched the Commission on Social Determinants of Health that we wanted to create a social movement. I think what you heard from Dr. Benjamin, what you represent here, is part of that social movement. And let me show you some evidence. In the wake of the Global Commission, I was commissioned by the British government to conduct a review of health inequalities in England. I called my review, and it's the title I gave my talk today, Fair Society, Healthy Lives. It was a statement that if we put fairness at the heart of all policy making, health would improve and health inequalities would diminish. I'm slightly regretful that I gave it that title. The government in Britain that we have now, the Conservative-led coalition government, uses the word fairness as if it has no meaning at all. They cut the top rate of tax and they call it fair. They cut benefits to the poor and they call it fair. They cut services to the disadvantaged and they call it fair. I call it a grotesque parody of fairness. And I debated with our health minister at British Medical Association House, BMA House, and I said to him, I use health equity in a technical sense. The systematic inequalities in health between social groups that are judged to be avoidable by reasonable means and are not avoided are unfair. Therefore, any government policies that retard progress toward reduction of these avoidable health inequalities are unfair. And that's how we should judge policies across the whole of society. And as I'll finish with, I'll tell you about our European review of social determinants of health and the health divide that we launched in London last Wednesday. This was figure one from my English review. And in a way, it set the intellectual framework for everything that followed. This is every neighborhood in England classified by deprivation. So at the upper end, you have the most affluent. At the other end, you have the most deprived. And the top graph is life expectancy. And what you can see is that people in neighborhoods near the very top have shorter life expectancy than those at the top. Those in the middle have shorter life expectancy than those near the top, and so on all the way from top to bottom. The bottom graph is disability-free life expectancy, and the gradient is steeper. The gap between top and bottom, which was seven years for life expectancy, is 17 years for disability-free life expectancy. And that means that people at the top are living 12 years of their lives on average with disability, and people at the bottom shorter lives, but are living 20 years of their lives with disability. Now, I said with the Global Commission, I said with my English review that it's about social justice and fairness. People have said to me, no government will take you seriously unless you can make the economic case. So I've said, okay, I've got a cost-effective intervention to deal with that large gap in disability, that 20 years of life spent with disability, hand out free cigarettes to the poor. You're not applauding. <laughs> of course you're not applauding. It's morally corrupt. 
We don't do things just because they're cost effective and cheap. We do what's right. And you only have to conduct that thought experiment for an instant to know we are driven by a moral commitment, not simply what's cheap and effective. I had six domains of recommendations in my English review. Every child should have the best start in life, education and lifelong learning, create fair employment and good work for all. This fourth one is a really radical one. In a rich society, everyone should have the minimum income necessary for a healthy life. And that minimum income includes, for example, for people beyond working age, having enough money to buy presents for your grandchildren. How can you lead a life of dignity if you can't buy presents for your grandchildren? And that's what we mean by a healthy life. The fifth is create and develop healthy and sustainable places and communities and take a social determinants approach to prevention. And as you can see, we think that every sector is a health sector. I was at a meeting where the Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs said, I am a health minister. Every minister, he said, is a health minister. Because what we do in our day job impacts on health. And I got a phone call from a senior official in the Ministry of Health in Norway. And she said, you know you've been quoting our Minister of Foreign Affairs saying he is a health minister. He now is our health minister. <laughs> and he'd like to meet you. So I went to Norway and we had this session of mutual congratulation. I told him what I'd been saying about him all around the world. And he said, I went to a county in southern Norway and not the health people, but the local government people showed me their plans and said, these have been Marmot certified. <laughs>